All right, welcome to part two. At this point, hopefully you've watched part one. You know why we have a digestive system. So now we're going to get a little bit more detail and we know it has to do with food. So this is all focusing on what happens to that food, okay? When you eat that burger and you know the beginning, you know the end, right? What happens in the middle? That's what this is focusing on. Where does all the food go and what does it do? So let's do it, right? So there's this little link here. Hold that thought. Let me show you. <clears throat> and I will show you, it's a pretty good way to kind of show how it happens. Uh, we pick whatever we want. So let's just say we pick an apple here, okay? There's gonna be a couple things throughout this that are a little different than we're gonna go over, but it's the same basic idea. All right, so food goes in the mouth. We're not worried about what's happening to it. We're just gonna worry about right now, where does it go? It goes in the mouth. Then from there, it goes down the esophagus, into the stomach, then through the small intestine. This is a fancy word for the first part of the small intestine, second part of the small intestine, but ultimately, we're going to care about it goes from the stomach, goes through the small intestine, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There's a reason it's so long. And then it goes into the colon or what's called the large intestine. And then stuff happens. And then it goes out the end. Okay, so that is in a nutshell what is happening. So let's go back for a second. So for our purposes, we're going to go with this is our path, okay? Which is what you just saw, goes in the mouth, down the esophagus, into the stomach, through the small intestine. Again, there you just saw a couple different parts of small intestine. Small intestine, large intestine, and then out the anus. Okay, that is our six part path that you need to know that we are going to focus on. So now we're gonna talk about what happens at each part. All right, so let's start with the mouth. At the mouth, right, sweet, a um, couple things happen. First, mechanical digestion happens, which is a member of movement. So at this part in the mouth, your teeth are actually cutting the food into pieces and mechanically making it smaller. Also, at the mouth, you have that saliva we talked about, and there's chemical digestion. Your saliva is chemicals, okay, that break down food and allow it uh, to start the digestive process. All right, so after the mouth, it goes down a muscular tube that connects the mouth to the stomach. Tube, okay, right there next to your windpipe, and that is called your esophagus. So, your esophagus. And mouth, stomach, tube goes down, esophagus. Now, how does it get down there? And never, maybe you really never thought of it before, because when you swallow, you put it right here. And then you basically leave it up to your digestive system to take the rest. You just put it right there. There's a process and a big fancy word that we're going to talk about that allows this to happen. Because you swallow, it goes here, and what happens is the food goes down and down and down and down. And you're not making it go down. You're not thinking about pushing it down yourself, because it just does it on its own. And um, it's a process, a big fancy word called peristalsis. <clears throat> and what peristalsis is, it's involuntary, which means that you have no control of it, and it's muscle movement that keeps food going along. So this happens in, throughout from the time you swallow it, throughout the whole rest of the process is peristalsis, which again is that process that the body does it by itself, without you thinking about it, moves the food all along. And there's this picture here, which is kind of gross, but inside of your body is kind of gross at times. This is what's showing inside of the esophagus what's happening after you swallow, it's contracting and it moves the food along. Again, kind of gross. Feel free to watch that as many times as you want or just simply fast forward. All right, then it goes down the esophagus, peristalsis, we got that, and then it goes into the stomach. And in the stomach, two things happen again. We have mechanical digestion. Your stomach is actually moving a little bit. It churns and it moves and it shakes it up a bit to help things get digested. But the reason it's shaking is because, more importantly, there's digestive juices, stomach acids, enzymes, things like that, that are in your stomach that as the food, you, you swallow it and it just sits there, that hamburger sits there, again, all these chemicals start going at it and start to break it down. This is, the, again, the, the beginning of chemical digestion in the saliva and now the stomach. So it's really getting broken down into this kind of mushy, liquidy stuff. So by the time it goes to the next spot, that's, that piece of bread is no longer solid, it is a liquid. It's really taking thing, it's making something called um, chyme or chyme, and it, it's uh, it making it a liquid. All right. So after we go to the stomach, then we go to this guy, small intestine. And the question is why is it called small when it's so long? It's just because the diameter it is pretty darn small, but the actual tube itself is fairly long. And this is where most of your chemical digestion happens. So a little saliva, a little bit of the stomach, but this is where most of it happens. We're going to talk in part three of why it happens here, but this is where most of the chemicals, oops, sorry, start happening. It's also 
where the absorption happens. So if I'm going to pick any of the places that in the digestive system that's the most important, to me, I think this is the most important because it's, it takes those things and it really, really breaks it down into itty bitty little pieces. And not only that, this is where it sucks out all the stuff you need. So in the beginning, breaks it down in tiny pieces, you know, throughout the rest of them, it stick, you know, grabs all those starch and carbohydrates and all the things that you need for your body. Now, this is another fancy vocab word. The reason the small intestine can grab all these things is because it has these little itty bitty, we'll call them fingers, okay? Inside the small intestine, these tiny little fingers that basically absorb all the things you need. You can think of it as like they grab out all the good stuff, but really it's absorbing into the bloodstream. These little, little things. And what it is, is they're called villi. Again, they're basically tiny little finger-shaped structures inside the small intestine um, that covers small intestine. Oops, oops. And they absorb nutrients. Sorry for that. Okay, that's their main job. Little finger-like things, and they absorb all the nutrients that you need. All right, continuing along. So here you see what I'm talking about? These little finger-like things, you're zooming in, and then basically they, they take it and they absorb it into your bloodstream, so it can go out to the rest of the body. After small intestine, we said, comes this guy. All right, your large intestine, also known as the colon. Now, at this point, the, what's made it to the colon has already been smushed down by the stomach into a liquid. It's been broken down into little pieces, and all the good stuff has been grabbed out. So now, all the nutrients and stuff are pretty much gone. So what you have is this slushy kind of mess that's really pretty liquidy. So now, the large intestine's main job is they get the water out of it. Okay, nutrients gone, but they want to take it and absorb all the water because your body needs water. That's their main job. So all the water can go into the bloodstream. And then what you're left with is all the junk you don't need. All the water's gone, all the nutrients are gone, okay? And that's where these last two parts come in. So the rectum is still a part of large intestine. It's just the final part, large intestine, colon, okay? And then the rectum is, is down here, and that's just kind of the storage tank um, for your feces or poop, okay? Stuff you don't need. And then the anus is your exit point, all right? That's where the, the feces will leave the body. And there you go. Um, that takes you through part two of what happens to food. So to kind of test yourself, um, you should be able to answer a question that says like, all right, what happens from here to the end and what happens along the way? So I'm going to say exactly what I think you should be able to say so you can test yourself. So if you want to pause it now or listen to me, then go back. Here we go. Food goes in the mouth and there it is chemically digested by saliva, mechanically digested by the teeth. Then goes down your esophagus through a process called peristalsis, where it then goes into your stomach. And in your stomach, there's mechanical digestion of churning it around, and there's also chemical digestion of the digestive acids that are starting to break down the food. Then from there, it goes into your small intestine. The small intestine is where most chemical digestion happens. Most of the chemicals are there and it's being broken down. And it's also where absorption happens. It takes out all the different things that you need. From there, it goes through your small intestine, grabbed by little finger-like things called villi, again, which grab out the stuff, and then goes into your large intestine. And in your large intestine, it soaks up all the water that is remaining, and it goes into the, the rectum where it stays there until it exits through the anus, okay? That's what you need to be able to do. What I just did from mouth, all the way down to anus. Okay, good luck to you. As always, use the resources I made for you or make your own resources. And of course, ask me for anything you need to help clarify anything. Congrats on part two.